Yo, what's up everyone? Today I'm going to show you how to make this realistic painted metal material in Blender. And I will try and break down what I'm doing so you can follow along, even if you are a beginner. So let's jump straight into it. We will start by making an edge mask, then make a base color with some slight bump, mix those two together. Then for the scratches, we'll make this texture with the noise texture node. Then add a few masks to separate the scratches out. Then mix that together. And then finally add an ambient occlusion mask for cracks and crevices. So I've opened up Blender 4.5 and today we're actually going to spare the default cube from its misery. No way, I'm just kidding. Bruh. Okay, so with that done, let's head over to the shading tab. And first of all, I just want to set up a few things. So I'm going to close both these areas here to make this section a bit bigger. And then I'm also going to go over to render settings and change the render engine from Eva to Cycles and enable the GPU. Okay, so let's select our cube and make a new material and call this main. So first of all, we want to create the edge mask so we can add some edge wear. Now, I have experimented with a bunch of different edge wear setups, but this one I'm going to show you is the one that I found best. So let's start by adding a bevel node. And if we press Command Shift and then click on this, it plugs it straight into the material output so we can view it. Now, if that doesn't work for you, you need to enable Node Wrangler in the settings. So open up settings, go to add-ons, search for node wrangler, and then enable that. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate this bevel node, and I'll set this top one to have 8 samples, and I'll set the radius to 0.1, and the radius on this one to 0. These are just some values that worked for me when I first made this shader. So make sure to play around with these values a little bit. Now we're going to add a difference mix color, or a mix color set to difference. Plug the top one into A, and the bottom one into B. Now if we view this, you can see it looks exactly the same. So let's add a color ramp and put that in and set this to constant. And this doesn't actually work in EV, so we have to head over to cycles. And then we can just click this drop down and disable scene lights and seed world. And then let's just crunch the white in heaps. Okay, so let's select all of these and press F to add a frame and call this edge wear. Okay, so now we can just Oh, poor little guy got left out. Let's just put this over here for the moment. And now you want to make the base material. So of course we're going to use the principled BSDF. And I'll plug that in. And I'm just going to use a yellow color. And then I want to add a bit of like paint bump to it. So I'll add a noise texture. Plug that into a color ramp. And then we can view this. Remember that's command shift on Mac. Let's select our noise texture and press control T to add a mapping and texture coordinate node. We want to use the generated socket, which is fine, so we can leave that. And let's press Command X and delete the mapping. I found a scale of 150 works pretty well. And then I just kind of crunched these in a bit. Something like this. And then we want to add a bump node and plug the color ramp into the height of the bump. And then plug the bump into the principled BSDF. Now we can view that. And if you zoom in, you can see we have some bump. A value of 0.1 might be too strong. We can change it later. I'll just set it to 0.8 for the moment. Now I'll also frame these and let's call it base. Dang, we also need to put the principled BSDF in here. Okay. So now we have both of those. We can mix these two together. So let's add a mix shader. Drop that in. Then let's plug the edge way into the factor of the mix shader. Now what we can do is add another principled BSDF and plug that into the last socket. Now we can basically just adjust this color to change the color of the edge wear. And we can also make this metallic. And I'll make that black. Now we want to add some scratches to this material. And this is the most complicated part, but hopefully you can follow along. I'll add a noise texture. And let's set this to 4D. Then change it from FBM to Rigid Multifractal. Now if we view this, remember that's Command Shift. You can see we have this weird squiggly sort of texture. Now I'm also just going to bring out this texture coordinate and then plug that into the noise texture and also add a mapping node. Whoa. And also add a mapping node. So let's change some of these settings. So I want to set the detail to 15 and the distortion to 11 and then let's bring the scale up to 1 down to 1. Now I'm going to add a color ramp and absolutely crunch the white in. Let's go 0.02 so the thing is, we don't want these scratches everywhere. We only want them in small spots and we don't want them to be long and stringy like it is at the moment. Now, the only way I figured out how to do this is by adding multiple noise textures and then using that noise texture to randomly mask the spots where we want them to be. 
Now, I don't know if there is an easier way to do this. If there is, please tell me in the comments. I'd be really interested to know. Now I'm going to add another noise texture and we'll use the same mapping. And then I'll duplicate the color ramp and press backspace or delete to reset that. And then just plug that in. I'll set the scale to 13 or so. Then I'll view this and bring these in something like this. Now I'm going to add a mix color and plug these both in. And then we can view that. You can see it's not really working. So we can set this to screen and then bring the factor all the way up. Now we want to separate this even more. So add another noise texture, reset this by clicking delete or backspace. Do the same with the color ramp, plug that in. I'm going to set this to like 4.2, detail to 15, and then just bring in the black and bring in the wide. Now let's view this. You can see what we have here. Now I'm going to duplicate the screen and plug that in like so. And then you can see we have some speckles and scratches. Okay, so now we want to add this back into our main setup. Um, first of all, let's just frame this. Select them all, press F. Call this scratches. And then we want to duplicate the mix shader. Drop it in there plug this into the bottom socket and we want to plug the output of our scratches into the factor. So now we can add another principled BSDF and plug that into the first slot. Now again we can adjust the color and roughness and metallic make it metallic and then we can also add some bump to this by adding a bump node plugging the output of our scratches into the height of the bump and then plug the bump into the principled BSDF and select inverted. Okay, that's pretty good for the moment. Now, the cool thing about this is if we say extrude this or do something like this, it's pretty adaptive, which is really nice. Now, another thing we could do is add some ambient occlusion. You don't have to do this, but it kind of does add a bit more realism. So I'll just show you what it does. We can add a color ramp in and then crunch it in like so. And then you can see it's highlighting the grooves and crevices, which is really cool. So we can use this as like a dirt mask, basically. Okay, so to add this in, we can do the same thing we did before with these mix shaders. So I'm just going to make a bit of room here. Bring that over. This should be good for the moment. Let's duplicate this mix shader and drop that in here. Now let's use this as the factor again but we want to flip the color ramp so it's inverted. Now we can add a principled BSDF. Whoops, not in there. Now let's add a principled BSDF and plug this in to the bottom socket. <coughs> we can plug that into the bottom socket of the shader. You know the drill by now, you can just change this color to whatever you want and yeah, that's really dope. Okay, and let's just put these two nodes into a frame, press F, and let's call it grime or something. Okay. Now, if we zoom out, you can see our node group is a complete mess, but I actually found this super cool Blender extension called Node Arrange. So if we open up our preferences and then go to extensions and just type in Node Arrange, there's this really cool extension by Leonardo Pike XL. You can just install that and enable it. Then in the shader editor, if you press N, and go down to arrange you can select everything and then click arrange and how cool is that it basically just arranged everything super neatly and now we can view everything nice and easy you can also like change the spacing i found a value of 40 to be pretty good okay so that's like the shader so there's one thing we could do that would make this really convenient if we select all of these nodes just don't select the material output we can press command g or Control G depending on Mac or Windows, and it will create a group. So at the moment we're inside a group. So if we press Tab, you can see we have this one node plugged into the material output, and this is the node group we just created. So we can tab back into that, and you can see we have our full node tree. Now it's not very helpful just having this group because we can't adjust or change anything. So let's tab back in, and you can see we have this group input node on the side over here. Now you can see it has an empty socket, we can grab that and we can just plug it into the principled BSDF 
base color and you can see it added this little socket here. Now if we tab out, we have this base color and we can adjust it. So you can do this with anything you'd like to change. So maybe you'd like to change the distance on the ambient occlusion. Tab back out, there you go, you have the distance. And you can just plug this into whatever you want so you can have any values out here that you can change later. And you can actually rename these sockets by selecting it, then clicking N, going to group, and then you can see we have the two sockets here. And I can just call this main color. And for the distance, I can call that grime distance. And let's just name this node group. So press N to bring up the side panel and go to node. And you can just call this whatever you want. I'll just call it, I'll just call it realistic metal. We can put that in the label as well and then paste it in here as well. So now the cool thing is if we have a different object with a material on it, we can just type in realistic metal and then we have our node group we just made. We can plug that in. Dang, that looks really bad. Okay, so that was it for this video. Hope you found it helpful and you learned something from it. If you want to see more tutorials like this, make sure to subscribe and drop a like. And with that said, I'll see you in the next one.